It's a tough life, isn't it, Duke? Geez, some people just don't have any ambition. Hey, folks. It is Wednesday, May 27th. <clears throat> it's a beautiful day today. We got a little over an inch of rain last night. It's warm, humid, and uh, sun's out, gun's out. So here we are, and our, uh, we're starting our next task on the farm, which is uh, we got to get the rest of this corn shelled out. Um, we're actually a little overdue on this. We've let it go longer than we should have. Part of that was just the market is not that great, so we thought, what's the harm in letting it sit? But it was harvested at such a high moisture last year. I'm sure we're going to have some mold in it, and um, I don't know that we're going to call this job really uh, something we can be super proud of this year because <laughs> we may be sending a pretty substandard product off to market, but uh, it can't sit here. It's got to go. So now's the time to get it done and send it on its way. So we've got the I'm in the way. We've got the corn sheller set up and a wagon next to it. We've got to do a little greasing and maintenance quick before we get started. But uh, the goal would be to get this crib done as soon as possible and then move on to this one. Yeah, me too. Well, it won't all be moldy. Just some percentage. What you what you got there? Uh, I'm doing the red green repair, <laughs> shall we? And we're, it seems to work just fine. <laughs> I think maybe uh, I think maybe duct tape might be one of the only things holding this together. Yeah, yeah that'll keep her together. Yeah. Here's Dad feeding the corn into the drag line of our Minneapolis Moline corn sheller. If you've seen my earlier videos, you've seen this sheller in action when I was using it to shell corn for wildlife feed, but this is the, uh, the whole setup with the drag line and everything installed. Uh, this sheller was made in we have approximately the 1960s. I'm not sure of the manufacture date. Uh, I know that they quit making shellers entirely in the early 70s, so it, it can't be any newer than that. Uh, I'm told that the 1200 designation means that it will process 1200 bushels of corn per hour, but we've never pushed it that hard. So you can see the corn comes in through the drag line conveyors and then is separated into its constituent parts. And the cobs and the husks come out on the left, and the shelled grain comes out on the right and goes into the gravity box. Well, we're about 20 minutes in. That's where we're at. Uh, Dad is taking a load of corn cobs over to the neighbor. Our neighbor is a dairy farmer and he takes the cobs and uses them for bedding. Um, ordinarily, we would put them back on the field, but ordinarily we'd also be doing this job in late March or early April. So um, now that everything's planted, we don't want to be driving over and knocking stuff down to put the cobs back on the field. So neighbor Rick can use them and uh, he's welcome to them. Here's what it looks like so far. This is not the best looking corn. It's definitely got kind of a gray tinge to it. Now that mold in there is not something I'm exactly proud of. Uh, doesn't ever make you feel good as a farmer when you're not sending a really good product down the road, but there's not much we could do about it. You must understand that last year was, well, I've talked about it so many times now. Last year was just the epitome of bad. <laughs> Between the late planting and the lack of heating degree days and, uh, uh, just a cold, wet, nasty summer and then a late harvest and the corn wasn't mature. There's just too much moisture in it and it didn't dry down in the cribs. And a lot of that is stuff that we just can't control. So sending it off to the elevator, I sort of comfort myself knowing that probably a lot of it is going to go into animal feed or possibly just industrial production stuff. So it'll get blended in with other corn and a lot of that will mix out. And uh, I don't know, I guess one of the gripes I have with the whole industrial system is that I don't know what happens to it really. It goes off to one of the big buyers and then it's a question mark. 
Sometimes you have a job you just have to get through and get it over with and uh, hope you do better this year. Because <laughs> this is still last year's mess. So we can only hope that we do better this year. Nothing's more death defying than road gear on the M. Well, Dad just left to dispose of some more cobs, and uh, we're on our third wagon load. And that's what we've got left in the crib, so things are moving right along. Sheller's running well. Knock on wood. <laughs> this thing has a tendency to blow up when you talk bad about it. And at this rate, we should be able to finish this crib up today. Although I think we might only fill three wagons. Uh, we're still strategizing on just exactly how we're going to get this to the elevator. If we want to pay the trucking fee and have it be simple, or if we want to pull the wagons ourselves and have it be a little more involved. <laughs> so anyway, that's still to be decided. Okay, we got one crib done and now we're gonna switch over the equipment. We've got to pull the drag line out from under that crib that we finished and put it in under this guy and then move the sheller over and of course we've got to move the wagon and everything to prep for that and dad is bringing up the mighty pettibone to assist with all this so we're gonna get this switched over we're done shelling for the day but this way we can be ready for tomorrow we're gonna uh, we made an appointment with the grain elevator to haul our loads, a couple loads up there, and then once we get that taken care of, we'll uh, come back here and resume operations. And hopefully tomorrow we can be finished with the shelling portion and just maybe have a couple loads left to run up then after that.
Okay, well, it's after supper. We got the sheller all moved over. We're all set up on the last crib. So I think we're pretty well done for the day. Uh, we've got mm, three and a half wagon loads of corn here. So we can take these two at a time. There's a local elevator uh, in uh, Montgomery, which is the nearest town that's got an elevator for us. Uh, they're kind of a small scale operation. Uh, we don't usually take our crops there. Usually we have a, a trucker take them to uh, Cargill or uh, Senex Harvest States down in, uh, oh, Savage. There's a big port on the Minnesota River in Savage. Uh, but since we have a limited amount of corn this year, we just figured we'll haul it to Montgomery. Now, the thing about the Montgomery elevator is that they are smaller scale, so they are only taking corn right now by appointment. I guess it's probably a combination of the COVID-19 restrictions and... Also, we're probably the only fools in the world selling corn that's not on contract right now <laughs> because the cash price is, you know, bleh. So, um, anyway, tomorrow morning we have an appointment to take two of these loads down there, and then we'll try to grab the other two in the afternoon once we have, well, once we have a full two loads ready to go again, and maybe we can make two trips over there in one day. And then we will have the majority of the corn gone, and there should only be about two loads left. Um, so that's our plan. That's it for today. We'll catch up tomorrow. Well, we're off to the elevator with the, each of us pulling a wagon. And uh, for anyone who's never pulled a full wagon of anything with a pickup truck, it's got no tongue weight and uh, all the play in the hitch. So it's the whole way. <laughs> so it'll be 45 minutes of that. was successful uh, I didn't take any more video it would have been kind of cool to shoot some while we were unloading there but it was my first time that I'd actually been there dad's been to that one a few times uh, so I wanted to pay attention and figure out what I was doing before I started honking around so <laughs> anyway we got back with our empties and uh, now we're filling those up we're just about done this is the second crib we are gonna have like a teaspoon of corn left in this crib when the current wagon which is right there, is full. So I guess we'll have to deal with that at some point, but um, we've got a call in. We were gonna try to get back to the elevator today with two more full wagons, but because they're not staffing it and it's kind of by appointment only, we've been having a little bit of a hard time coordinating. So what we might end up doing is just making two trips there tomorrow. So for today, we're gonna finish everything we can with this. And, uh, and actually the weather is supposed to be really nice uh, all today, it has been low humidity, finally the rain that we'd been getting sporadically sort of cleared out. So I think we're going to go and cut down that field of alfalfa. Uh, and we'll try to get that baled. We'll have about four days of good weather uh, to try to get that baled. So hopefully that'll give it enough drying time and maybe we can be baling on Sunday. It's Thursday right now. We could bale Monday. There's a little bit of a chance of rain Monday. It'd be nice to have it off the field and done before then. Um, but again, you have to be flexible, I guess. So I think that's our plan of action for the rest of the day. Let's get the hay bind greased up and ready to go and dad will probably cut that field of hay down. And that'll be about it for today after we're loaded up and don't have any full or don't have any empty wagons left to use. And apologies, I didn't take a whole lot of video today with shelling corn. Just imagine everything you've seen so far over and over again and that's that's about it that's the whole process <laughs> 